Toharu Majutsu no Index Imaginary Fest is a mobile gacha turn-based RPG for smartphones developed by Deadlock Inc. and published by Square Enix. It's a faithful game adaptation of the Toaru anime series, which is to say it features the same designs, voice cast, soundtrack and story from all the anime shows that belongs to this series. The story mode in this game is an abridged version of the events in the anime, and the anime is already abridged in many places. And besides, while the anime features truly stunning animations in the first two seasons, you will only get still screenshots in this game. So, if you never watched the anime or read the novels, this game will not be a good replacement for those. <laughs> On the other hand, this is a pretty decent game in its own right. You get a very interesting system where each character is represented by a card. You can attack enemy cards and even do combo attacks by changing their positions on the field. <laughs> the range of each character's attack is represented by those arrows. And each character has a unique skill and a super attack. There is also assistant characters who can boost the stats of battle characters and also have unique abilities, like buffs and healing. All those give plenty of space for creative strategies and combinations. The graphics are excellent. They give the same feel as the anime version, and the attack animations and backgrounds represent key moments from the story. So fans of the series will certainly enjoy this attention to details. The voice cast is the same as the anime, and they give the same great performances. The story mode is fully voiced. <laughs> but not all the special events. Most are only partially voiced. But that's okay, because most of those special events are just silly slice of life stories, nothing too serious. The character roster features characters from all over the series and spin offs, and even characters who are yet to make an appearance in the anime series are playable here. It has almost all the characters that appeared in the anime series, and yet, it feels like there isn't all that many. But why? The answer is very simple. The variety of characters get overshadowed by the overwhelming number of Misaka Mikoto outs. There is a Misaka Mikoto for everything you can possibly imagine. You name it. Blue Biribiri, Green Biribiri, Level 6 Biribiri, Bikini Biribiri, PE Biribiri, Christmas Biribiri, Halloween Biribiri, New Year's Eve Biribiri, and many more. That's a Biribiri overload. And that's not even counting the sisters, who also have a huge amount of faults of their own. This is so unfair! I mean, I know that Misaka is super popular, but I don't care! Where is my Christmas Sasha? And how about Halloween Lessa? Hell, give me Valentine Aqua! Anyway, the daily grind can be pretty repetitive in this game. You have your usual stages to farm money, and experience items. But in order to fully upgrade your characters, you will also need to farm upgrade items from old stages in the story mode over and over again, which can be pretty annoying. To remediate this, the game gives you an infinite amount of skip tickets, but the drop rate for those upgrade items is terrible, so you can still lose all your stamina and get zero of the items you really need. The game also features a fragment system, which can be really good and bad at the same time. 
The good thing about it is that you can easily farm those fragments from normal battles and events. And you can also buy them from the in-game store by using the currency that you get from events and PvP battles. And once you collect 140 fragments, you can exchange them for a new character. That's right, you don't even need to use the gacha, it's totally RNG free. And if you already have that character, you can use those fragments to make them even stronger. This is a very generous system. However, there is a bad side to it, because at later stages, a normal character will not be enough. You will want all the fragments you can get in order to make them useful, which means that if there is a new banner with a new character, you will want to summon that character at least twice. Once for the character itself, and once more for the fragments that you get for dupes. Otherwise, this new character will not be strong enough for the end game. Thankfully, the gacha rates are not that bad, and getting the rarest character isn't all that difficult. But if everything fails, there is also a spark system to save you, which is a system that lets you pick any of the characters on the Ray Top banner after doing 150 summons. It's a safe net for those who are really unlucky. Sparking! This game has a bit of raising scene elements too, as you can choose a specific navigator to read all the in-game messages for you. And you can also set your favorite characters to appear on the home screen. They will even greet you and give you presents. You can also give gifts to them to raise your friendship level. Which will unlock new voice lines. And that's not all. Some characters even come with live 2D animations. Which means you can touch, uh, I, I, I mean, Na, nani interact with them in a deeper level. <laughs> all in all, this is an above average gacha RPG that most fans of the series will enjoy. But it's not for everyone. And it can get a bit tedious after a few weeks. If this series proves to be popular enough in the West, we might see an English release in the future. But for now, it's a Japanese only game. You probably won't have many issues playing this, even if you can't read Japanese at all. So, if you are a fan of the series, you should at least give it a try. And that's it for this review! But if you have any other questions about Towaru Majutsu no Index Imaginary Fest, or if you have any recommendations for future reviews, just leave a comment! Thank you for watching! Bye!